Hello, viewers of the Amber Army YouTube channel. I am here with Kieran today as your two new mem newest members of the Amber Army YouTube channel. We are here to discuss today the fixtures for the upcoming 23-24 season and what has been a very busy week with tra with transfers within the club. I mean, it has been. I think we'll first go into the fixtures because they are the more fresh, relevant things. Um, we're starting the season with an Acton Stanley game away from home, followed by a game to Doncaster Rovers at Rodney Parade on the 12th. We've got the uh, cup game against Charlton in between that. I believe yeah. on the, uh, I don't know, the 9th or something. It's a Tuesday. That, that um, Tuesday. Yeah, that Charlton game was announced today as well. Um, I believe that that Charlton game would be just after Accrington heading into Doncaster. Yeah. So at, at least we now know we've got um, five home games in two months now, is it? I, it's five home games, including this game, yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at the calendar here. We start our season on the 5th. That's the Acton game away from home. We then the game Doncaster at Rodney Parade on the 12th. And then on the Tuesday, which is the day we like a cup game, we're playing yeah. on the 8th. So I was wondering, yeah. off, but that's most likely going to be the day that that game is played. Definitely. Well, we then finish off the month with two away games to, to a crew in Forest Green and then end the month with a Sutton United at home. So not a bad first month for fixtures. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a nice it is sort of a nice first month there. Um, within points predictions, I'd possibly say we get about 10 points. If we do get 10 points, I think everybody's going to be pleased with the start we've had um, under Coughlin as his first uh, full year as manager. I mean, I'm not going to uh, go into predictions in terms of how I think we're this season going to go, because we've still got a lot of a transfer window to go, of course. But of course. the one game that, hi that I'm highlighting from that first month is well actually there's two of them but the main one i'm going to talk about or bring up is the doncaster game because we've seen how good their signings have been so far this window yeah, exactly. they've made like a, a few seven like seven or so signings already within this window and they've obviously brought in a new manager as well on the side of that so that is going to really fresh things up in the doncaster camp and another game that i possibly want to bring up is the crew game away from home on that Tuesday night following the Charlton game so that's going to be like four games in two weeks which is going to be another hectic schedule for our boys but I believe we can pull through and possibly get three points against crew. Yeah I mean the one that I'm kind of in a worry of how we do is that first home game the Doncast well other than that they seem to all be pretty uh, even games of course newly relegated Forest Green is away in that fixture which yeah. the correct me if i'm wrong it's the closest game we have in terms of a great travel to yeah it's like hour on the coach um but within that first month in august we have two of the newly relegated teams away from home so obviously they're going to have the league one heritage and we're just going to be sat there like OK, maybe we can get a result out of this because the camp is still disappointed that they got relegated. Definitely. It's it's nice that we're playing instead of the newly promoted teams, the newly relegated ones, because it is one of two things. They've either got the morale of we've been relegated, we don't want to be here, it's gutting, or mm -hmm. we don't want to be here anymore, let's play well. But it yeah. depends what mentality both of those teams go into, but it's going to be an interesting first month. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, but I was watching the cup draw earlier on, like, just for, like, obviously having a look at who we get. And I think when they pulled Swansea out the hat, they pulled number 18 out rather than 19. And um, I think Swansea away would have been so much better than Charlton at home. But I do think now that we've got Charlton, we, we could do a job down at Rodney Parade. I mean, adding a, uh, a home game into the fact we've only got four of them in the first two months, I'm yeah. glad the home game. Charlton, I don't mind as a team. I haven't, I'll be honest, haven't seen too much in terms of them. I believe it's the first time we've played them 
since 1980 or somewhere along along those lines. It's been a it's been a good while since we've played them, but that'll be one to look forward to. I'll definitely be at that one. Definitely, so will I. Um, games I'm going to try and get to in that month, in that August month, I am going to try and get to Crow away, and I am going to try and obviously get to as many home games as I possibly can this year. Yeah, definitely. The Sutton one's going to be interesting, but you know what? But it's before we go into talking about this one month, we'll move on to September, where we've got two home games as well as three away. We've got Wimbledon at home, Crawley followed by Barrow away. Then we've got Bradford City at home, followed by Salford City away. Oh, that is going to be a tricky month, in my opinion. I think the ending with Bradford, Salford, I think that is literally how we finish the season. Um, but the other way round, I think it's like Salford, Bradford. It is, it is, yes. Yeah, I, thought I, I thought I noticed that on the um, fixture list this morning. Um, but obviously you were talking about Barrow then. They're a solid side at the moment as well. Obviously, they'll be looking for a better finish than last season. Um, they had a good season last year. They were they were towards the playoffs for most of the season, but they mm-hmm. just fell short, which is unfortunate. But for what? Yeah. Isn't it a second season in the uh, back in the FL for them now? I believe, I believe it's a third. This is going to be their third. Okay, you know, but to con- considering they finished top half, e- kind of leading towards the playoffs, it's. It's a solid for them. Definitely. Um, Who else did you say was in that month? Sorry. We've got Wimbledon at home first, and that's Holy Town away, followed by Barrow away. Then we've got Bradford City at home, followed by Salford City away. Salford City away is a game that we don't tend to do very well. We lost fun for last year. Yeah, fun fun fact, we've never won a back round, so um, Uh, hopefully... God will change at that ground this year. Obviously, um, Crawley are in there. They were struggling end of last season, tr- trying to survive. Obviously, they got Don Telford in their lineup still. Um, but yeah, that that sounds like a, another solid month, I believe. A bit more difficult than the August month around it, but I do think we'll pick up a good few points there as well. I mean, we've got towards the end of September, two teams that were in the playoffs last year. So you can't say it's not a difficult month. We know that Wimbledon and Crawley were towards the bottom of the table last year. Surprising to see Wimbledon down there, considering I think they've got a pretty tidy squad. But no, it's a, it's a difficult month, but I feel it's one that we can push through. And when you consider some of the other months on this calendar, it's a pretty nice one. Definitely. Yeah, October's a busy one. We've got six games in that. Uh, we've got Manchester at home, followed by Harrogate Town, Swindon away, Walsall at home, newly promoted Knox County away from home, followed by okay. Gillingham. I think I think with Notts County being on a Tuesday, that sort of put me off going to Notts County away now. So I am going to try and get to Walsall away now that it's been booked for a Saturday game. Um I think this month is going to be a hectic schedule. There will be a lot of rotating from Coughlin. Even if he's not happy with the squad, there will be a lot of rotating going on within the squad within the month of October, just to, just to see where players can fit in. It's not even just that. When you consider the fact that first month we has we have five games, second month we have five games, now in October we've got six. So you know, adding on an extra game into a into a what thirty one day month, it's going to be a uh, very difficult month in terms of just fitness and fatigue. Luckily, there's not too much travelling in the two games. We've got a Swindon game away followed by Walsall, so it's not. Yeah, all that's a good travelling, but it's a lot of games to go through. Definitely. In contrast, November's not busy at all. Only four games, I believe. Yeah, I, do, I, do want, in here, right? I do. I do want to bring up the FA Cup first round in November. It's the first. It's usually played within the first week of November. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Again, sorry, um, of November. So um, we've got obviously the FA Cup to look forward to. Obviously, a few national league and non-league sides will be coming into the competition again this year. 
So hopefully we get to visit one of them like we did with Met Police the other year, which was an iconic away day for myself. Uh, and so much. Gotta love the Met Police. That's that would make sense to be why we've only got four games in November, league games. That is, we've got MK Dons at home, followed by Mansfield Town away, Stockport at home, and I mean, I don't this saying this name of a team doesn't seem to uh, be the nicest with our Newport fans, but the, the game to end that month is Morecambe away. Oh, that is going to be such a tricky month, honestly. Um, obviously, November, December time is where we sort of like drop in form recently in recent years. I've seen that under Flynn. I've seen that under Robbery. And um, I'm hoping we do get a few good results there. But obviously, refs will be refs. Mansfield will be tricky. We know that from recent years from their place. Absolute absolutely lovely, lovely ground. I've got nothing against Mansfield ground. I've got nothing against their staff. I've got nothing against their players, nothing against their fans. They're a great side. But when it does come to going up there, the officials can be a bit dodgy. I mean, I don't even think that's just Mansfield. I'm pretty sure that's a universal EFF. Mm, true. But I've had many conversations about refs, and I don't want to do this and the one. But November, short a month in terms of league games, we'll have an FA Cup game in there somewhere. Whether it's home or away, yet yeah, we won't know until nearer to the time. Uh, yeah. We got one team that was in the playoffs reached the final and lost in Stockport at Rodney Parade, and we've that got two teams that recently came down and being MK Dons and Morecambe, and then Mansfield in there as well. That, stop, that Stockport game will be tricky as well. I think um, them not getting promoted is going to have a back burner on them. So I think they're going to try and push for automatics this year and try and like push on to what they succeeded with last year. I mean, they were close to it, weren't they? They, they just fell short towards... They had like a dip in form at one point of the season that, that ended up costing them. But yeah, it's, in terms of November, I think the uh, term I'd like to use is quality over quantity. We've got a very hard run of games, but there's not many of them. But even with mm -hmm. even with the uh, cup game, that could make this uh, month very interesting. December, we're going towards Christmas time now. We've actually got yeah. more home games here than we've got away games, which is nice. I know we've got Wrexham and Forest Green in this month, and I am absolutely shit at myself already. Because um, obviously... Wrexham will be bringing in them sign-ins later this month. I've heard they're interested in the form of Man United star. And um, Forest Green, obviously, big dunk and Ferguson. I know you're a fan of him, Kieran. And um, I, think, I think they need to be pushing on now to try and get back into League One. Yeah, it was an atrocious season from them last, wouldn't it, to be fair? But this month is, uh, I think this one's the probably, in terms of calendar months, Maybe our most tricky. We begin the yeah. month of December with an away game to Tranmere, followed by a home game to Grimsby. We know what they're they're capable of on their day. Followed by the elusive Wrexham away day on the twenty third of December, and then Boxing Day. We've got Forest Green at home, followed by Crew Alexandra at home three days later on the 29th. That is that is such a tricky month, and like I said earlier. Uh, we see the dip in form in, you know, around December time. And this is going to be such a crucial month for us um, moving forward because of obviously them big, big games coming in, like two local derbies. And then you've got um, Tranmere as well at the start of the month. That is going to be so tricky to sort of like navigate our way around it and try and pick up as many points as possible, to be honest. I mean, it, the thing is with this kind of December month, we won't know what to expect for the rest of our campaign until around December, where we've got a lot of games to play. It's not the area of our table position. And let's say we are towards the bottom half of the uh, table, tinting towards relegation. That tends to mean December is a month for change. It's a month for actually needing results. And we've just got to hope that in the first four months we've got before this, 
we do pretty well because this month is very tricky. Yeah, um, obviously the next month after that, we've got the January signings coming in. Hopefully we do make a few. We'll touch on the summer signings in a minute after we've discussed the elusive fixtures of this new season. Yep, of course. January, uh, like you mentioned, the window opens here. We get to see more change within the squad. Uh, pretty good signings Cochran made in January. Uh, well, this he did. Year, but yeah, he made some pretty good signings. But the, this month seems to be, in, com- in contrast to December, a pretty simple month. Sutton away, followed by Accrington Stanley at home. Doncaster away, which will be a tricky one. That home game to Wrexham happens less than a month after we travel to do the away game on the uh, 20th, that is. And then we've got Harrogate down on the 27th away from home. I think we've sometimes always sort of struggled around um, around the Sutton game because the stewards down there are appalling. And obviously we've got that Wrexham game within the month. Obviously, Sky Sports are going to try and get involved. Obviously, S4C are going to try and get involved to try and get like the Welsh commentary on it. And um, I think Casanova versus Wrexham is going to be a good, going to be a good one this year. I mean, we've really got to hope that you know this is a topic we can talk about for a potential another vidcast, a separate video, and that these Welsh derbies, so you want to call them. It's not a derby, it's a rivalry, but we'll we'll move on from that. Um, these games give a lot of chance to not only promote good football in League 2, but hopefully promote as the Welsh League, because we know that we like signing players from the Welsh League, and maybe pull some off in January in preparation for that Wrexham game at home, maybe in some more in August or I mean, September. Yeah. But it gives I'm, us a... Uh, very good chance to yeah. promote our club because we know it's going to get good exposure. Obviously, it's going to. Uh, it yeah. gives us a chance to promote the Welsh League, just Welsh yeah. culture, and I really hope that this could be a step a step in the right direction, not only for our club but Welsh football as a whole. It definitely could be, but mm-hmm. that's that's a topic mm-hmm. yeah. we talk about. I, mean, I, mean, video. I remember. Me. I remember making a college video, I think, but it was back when I was on level two. So it was before you arrived in the college. Um, I made a promotional video around Welsh football and um, how it's so important to keep these clubs, such as your Swansea, your Cardiff, your Rex and your Newports, up in within the football league. Like that was bef- that was well before Wrexham got the takeover as well. So I didn't mind Wrexham back then, but now that they're getting all the sort of attention from the media and it's just it's it's not fair on the other 71 clubs in the EFL who have this sort of mind game to try and put themselves out there as a club I mean yeah it's uh I, I'm, I'm all for promoting Welsh football but what I'm not in the kind of liking of isn't necessarily the fact that Wrexham are owned by billionaires, because that's what they are, right? Yeah. It's not that. It's the fact that, like you've said, the media are focusing so much on Wrexham, as they should, right? They're, they're a big talking point, understandable. But there's got to be a level of fairness in where they're talking about other clubs as well. And it's a... Uh, this this situation regarding Wrexham, and I understand that they're probably not too interested in this. Maybe they are. You know, I'm not going to act like I know Wrexham, but I'm sure they do not mind having this attention drawn to them instead of uh, drawn to the other 71 clubs in the EFL, other 23 in this league. But it's a... Uh, yeah, the, these Welsh games are hopefully going to be a chance for us to promote ourselves as a good footballing side. Definitely. Um, do you want to maybe move on to the February fixtures now? Good show, good show. All right, so February begins with Swindon at home, followed by Walsall away, followed by two home games, that being to Notts County and Gillingham, which will be interesting. 
And then we've got yes. NP Dons away to finish off February. That is very a very tricky month again. Like you mentioned then, Notts County, they're going to be on a real roll um, if they do get the start they want. Obviously, Gillingham as well. They're going to be wanting to push with Johnny Williams now in their midfield. Um, obviously, as well, you've got Walsh all away in that month. It's going to be such a tricky month around February, around February time just to like sort of get points and sort of like challenge for the playoffs. Yeah, it tends to be February and March tend to be the kind of months where you know where you're going to be. You don't want to be near relegation. You'd ideally want to be in playoffs, but if you're not, February's the chance to solidify yourself in the division and then the following two months of chances to develop youth players, show them what they're able to do. But speaking of March, it's a very busy month. Six games in March. Yeah, we've got Mansfield at home, followed by Stockport away. We know what happened last year, or last season, I should say, with Stockport away. Um, Morton at home, followed by Hamilton away, Barrow at home, and then Colchester United away to conclude March. Unbelievable. Yeah, we 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 won three nil against Northampton on the Good Friday, and then we lost four. What was it? Four nil or four one against Stockport oh. a couple a couple of days later. Yeah. So that form around Easter is going to be concerning again this year, with like no rest for the wicked um, around that Easter period. I'm not saying that because obviously, like, it's beneficial toward. Well, it's not beneficial towards our club. It's beneficial. It's not beneficial, but for any club, to be honest, because going into a Friday and then a Monday game, and then you're back in on the Saturday. That's like three games within eight days or whatever, and it is going to be a tricky month when Easter does roll around. I mean, not benef- It's not beneficial in the way that for the players, for the coach, uh, staff. Yeah. Uh, they're really stressed. Of course, they're going to be. There's a lot more risk of injury rotation. If you don't have a squad that big, these months kind of really sort you out. But the thing that it does bring that's good, because of how many games, you're going to get more money because there's more games in the month. So in terms of a financial month, this month most likely would be better than, let's say, November when we've only got four games. But November would be a lot more manageable than this March is going to be. Yeah, you were just touching on um, how the squad sizes will um, vary, um, if that's the word I'm looking for, um, around this time. And they will. Like, I think um, Ollie mentioned in our group yesterday that we've got now, what, a squad of 18? Um, well, nearly full. Oh, nearly I'm full. Not- as well, eighteen, yeah. Um, but we've got a full start in eleven now, which is promising. Obviously, moving forward, Karen, um, Harrison Bright as well. Who, where is he going to fill in this year? I mean, it's interesting if you're if you're looking at the options we've got. Again, this is I think this is one we can move on to when we talk about the contracts. But in short, I feel like at the minute we've not got any option that can really contest with Harrison Bright for that. For that role at right back, right wing back. I don't think we've really got anyone. But moving on to the final month, which is April. I know it's not May that is the uh, final month. We've had talks and kind of queries as to why that is. We've kind of come to the conclusion that it's because games will be postponed. It'll give us a chance to maneuver these games around a lot easier and give. Yeah. Most likely the players more time off, which is something they need because we've seen in this off season that there's still a lot of football going on, and there was only like a week break, if that. You look at the you look at sort of like the players who have signed a t- new like two year deal. It's going to give them the rest and time to recover. Um, you look at Nick Townsend, Nathan Wood. How many games are they going to play next year and be beneficial to towards our squad next season? It's going to be key for them to get time off. Obviously, we might lose Townsend to Antigua and Barbuda over the over the season as well. So he's going to be involved in even more games than we thought he would be. I mean, yeah, he's involved at the minute, isn't he? And the season what ended like a month ago and a bit ago, if not yeah. close to two months now. 
But yeah, it is. It is close to two months now. I think it ended May sixth. So it's actually past two months. Wait, no, May sixth. No, in a, in a couple of weeks it'll be two months. But anyway, the eight ball games consist of, and hopefully at this point we're at least in the division still. We're at least guaranteed safety. Hopefully at this point we would have had that. If not, we'll be able to solidify it here. We've got Crawley at home, Grimsby away, Tranmere Rovers at home. On my birthday here, April 20th, we've got Salford at home. And then a week later, our final game is travelling up to Bradford. Now, when you look at it, it's a nice start to the month with Crawley. Um, and then you go down the list and you see Sutton and Bradford. It's such a pain, that is. But um, we know from recent years what it's like to go to Bradford. We know what sort of ground it is. It's such a nice ground. and. Um, it would be a lovely ground for me to take off, but obviously I work, so I can't really get there on um, a Saturday afternoon and get back to work for six. <laughs> I mean, mate, you know, who knows what happens down the line with that. But yeah, the end, like you mentioned, we in one month, which is September, we've got Bradford at home and Salford away. And then to conclude April last season, we've got Salford at home, then Bradford away. It's a nice little... Uh, chain a change about which is interesting we've actually got it that kind of pattern with um swindon and walsall as well in all you've got um swindon town at uh, swindon town away walsall at home that being on the 14th and the 21st respectively and then in february on the 10th no on the third we've got swindon at home then on the 10th we've got walsall away so it's a nice um Sort of mixed, exactly. yeah, but the opposite grounds, if you know what I mean. The exact yeah. copy of those. It is going to be such a difficult end to the season with, like, you know, how you mentioned you Salford Bradford. I reckon they're going to be up there challenging this year again. Um, so obviously, two teams that finished in the playoffs, they're going to be they they're the two that sort of lost the playoffs. Um, in my opinion, when you look at it directly. Um, obviously, both losing in their first legs of tie, um, semi final, sorry, of ties, they're going to be wanting to push forward now. Obviously, Bradford being managed by Mark Hughes as well, and Salford being backed by Class of 96, it's going to be such an entertaining season. Yeah, it's this season looks to be one of the most, if not the most, exciting seasons of League Two when you look at the teams on paper. It's You've look, you're looking at probably about maybe 12 teams that could push towards playoffs, if not more. Playoffs um, and all that, of course. It is unbelievable how close it's going to be up there this year. But I think the one main title contender that stands out to me at the moment is MK Dons. MK Dons. Um, I do think they're going to sort of not like run away with it, but sort of like become early contenders with their start to the season. Obviously, they've just signed Cameron Norman. They've signed um, a couple of other good players within the, within the country as well. And I reckon that is going to really confidence boost them towards the new season. I mean, I'm sure you're going to, if there are comments, going to be comments under this, I'm sure you'll get comments of a uh, bias there, not saying that Wrexham will be the ones contending for the title, because at the minute, according to uh, definitely. Like the- Every betting app in the plan on the planet, Wrexham are favourites for the title. But I guess I'm not going to make any predictions until the windows are up, and I kind of see a little bit of a. It's definitely not. It's definitely not favouritism within my point. Um, I just, I just think Wrexham are going to lack a bit more this year because obviously they're coming up against higher league opposition now. Obviously. They're coming from the National League. And when you look at the National League, it's a very, yes, it's a very competitive league. But at the end, by the end of, well, by the end of possibly mid January, them and Notts County had already run away with it. And like you said, thank you, Run. There's like 12 teams possibly contending for the title this year and playoffs. And that is going to really affect Wrexham, I think, this year. I mean, I think it'll affect personally every team. I don't think predictions within this season are going to be very uh, well-backed and they're not going to look too good because there's so many teams that 
could be up there that literally mm-hmm. picking a team to finish top of the league is blindly throwing a dart at the board and seeing which one it lands on. It's very, uh, there's it no, is. you can make your, your best guesses, but this is, it's football at the end of the day. One, it's, yes, you can kind of predict the result, but you can't predict how an entire season will go, especially not off the, uh, potentially how the signings go. But yeah, it's a very interesting season. And in preparation for that season, we brought in a, what's a two edition so far, as well as a few contract deals. Uh, yeah. Nathan Wood would be the uh, first permanent one. Yeah, um, Nathan Wood, definitely. Um, I think he's going to be a very good player within the midfield this year. I think uh, Cotman's going to try and move him down towards midfield. Obviously, we signed Will Evans to play on the left. And we sort of moved him back to left, back to see what would experiment with Aaron Lewis in midfield. And obviously now, if Coughlin is going to try and move Nathan into midfield, it's going to be a very, very high competitive stack to the midfield. Like you've got your Aaron Wildix, you've got your Harry Charles Lee's in there, you've got your Bennett's who've just signed a new deal. And it's going to be a really competitive, like sort of, um, competition, as if you would say, for the midfield this year. Yeah, I mean, the, I don't think there's any real debate with that. There's, we've not got the hugest depth in terms of midfield, but there's definite quality there. Um, off the research I did, uh, Nathan Wood tended to play, yes, in the midfield, but a more attacking role on the left side. Very similar from what I've seen to a a kind of position Will Evans played when we uh, originally signed him, but he's got such a, uh, well, Cotman's got such his aura to develop a player into a certain sp- position that I feel you can really chuck this guy anywhere on that left side of the pitch that's more attacking, whether we are to switch formation next year and play with a different setup or not. I feel he's going to have a uh, very pivotal role and he's got that creativity that we need now that uh that of Nathan Mariah Welsh is gone because we know yeah. how impactful he was but now that he's gone it seems that uh Nathan Wood's the one to uh kind of slide in that gap yeah Nathan Nathan replaces Nathan as, as if you would possibly put it um but yeah really happy with Nathan Wood signing obviously used to be in our youth academy as well you can check out Guys, you can check out mine and Kieran's videos thoughts um, with the links to our channels in the description. Um, obviously, seven assists in all competitions around the Welsh League last year. I believe that's the Welsh Cup, the Welsh League Cup. Then you've obviously got the JD Premier. And then you've also got the, I believe it's the Conference Championship. I'm not too sure what it would be about. I mean, I'm not going to act like I'm very knowledgeable on the Welsh League at all, but I should remember this, but I don't remember his exact stats. But what I do remember from what I believe is in terms of his goal contributions in the entire time that he was at Pennybomb, he got um, for every, I believe it was for every two goals, he had an assist. So it's a nice little match. Yeah, that is going to be a very, very good thing. And obviously, if he does come up with another sort of um, flair from the Welsh League, it's going to promote that league again, like you said, when we were talking about Wrexham and Newport earlier on. And it will bring up more talent from the Welsh League, I think. And you obviously saw the goalkeeper who had an amazing game in that cup final. I can't remember his name personally, but... I knew he did have a good game because um, we were on about signing him, weren't we? Yeah, we were all on about potentially him being the uh, potential replacement for Nick Townsend So we didn't know if he was going to stay or not. But I've just opened up the uh, article just about Nathan Wood, just so we can have a little overview and summary of him. Also turns out, which I actually did mention in the video, in the, uh, video I made, but I didn't men- mention it here, of course, that he used to be teammates with James Waite as well. So it's a, yeah, it's a matter of creativity and um, uh, linking up play. They're going to know 
how each other want to play necessarily. Obviously, obviously you talk about James him and James Waits um, sort of relationship. You've obviously got James Waite signing that new deal now till the end of this season coming up. That is going to be an absolute massive role. Um, I know some fans were keen on him um, towards the middle of the season, but then his performance is sort of starting skyrocketing and um, he eventually got on the same page as the fans. Yeah, I mean, we've, we had a lot of players do that last year in the way that they, they had a, t- a time where they were liked, not liked, and then kind of liked more, got into different ways of form. And I think a lot of that has to be credited to uh, Coughlin and Joe Dunn and just all of the uh, back staff. backroom staff with uh, Newport for clearly developing the way that these players had to play because how they were playing clearly didn't work. Coughlin, Dunn. The backroom staff identified that and have since fixed that. And we can, we can see that we've got a team that links pretty well now, other than the occasional hiccup every game. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to move on to the other signing that we made in the week? I mean, if you'd like, I'm just going to open up his Nathan Wood. If I can, it won't let me. OK, you know what? Nathan Wood stats won't let me open it. What I can tell you is from last season, he had 15 goals and seven assists. So it's roughly the start I mentioned for every two goals he's got an assist. So that's that, that, that is a very exalted. that is a very creative attacking midfielder. And I think if you are a winger, you can play that attacking midfielder role. So whether Robbery wants to introduce that rather than playing holding midfielder role with Bennett next year and sort of develop Bennett into a proper midfielder, like a centre midfielder, not a defensive one. I think that would be a good move from Coughlin. Yep, and here, here here's the full stats. I found them now. 130 games for Penny Bond, 36 goals, 23 assists. So it's actually every three goals he's got two assists. So there's that's, that's, there's that's, theory they sorted. That's a very good uh, stats to have. Obviously, yeah. then a couple of days, and then a couple of days after we made the signing of Nathan Wood. We signed Kyle, I forgot his name. <laughs> Kyle Jameson. Kyle oh, Jameson from Tranmere after his deal with the Merseyside based club expired. Definitely. I think this is another solid sign. And I think Cochran said when he signed that we wanted more pace in the defence last year. And we've obviously got it now with Jameson only being 24 years old at six foot tall. It's going to be such a nice thing to see a quick centre back rather than people having to slow down to like sort of let another player overlap them. Yeah, he's got a little bit of EFL experience. He was at Barrow back in 2018 when they used to be a uh, a national league club. He played 25 games there. He played for Oldham back when they were in League Two. He played 36 games across two campaigns. And then the most recent one with Tranmere when he joined from Oldham on, it seems, only a one-year contract. He played 10 league games, 14 if you include all competitions, which doesn't look great, admittedly, when you're looking at it from an outsider's point of view. But I I saw about, I believe it was two games that I actually saw him play. And the very obvious one, the one that... Coughlin mentioned is his pace. He's very uh, good at tracking back. He he can allow the players to make their overlapping runs without slowing down because he can track back if needs be. He seems to be a very calm, composed centre back. Knows how to pass the ball. Knows how what the uh, what it takes to be a defender, as well as being very vocal. From what I saw, which is a uh, situation that you need with a centre back in the modern wow. era being kind of a uh, leader in a way. And I know we've got a few of them, but adding another one to the back line surely is not a bad thing at all. Yeah, you sort of touched on... Um, what did you sort of touch on there? I forgot. Um, <laughs> I'm sort of like in my days at the moment. Um, but yeah, you sort of touched on... Oh my God, I can't even remember. <laughs> I mean, you sort of touched on... I got it. Uh, I got it, finally. You sort of touched on how he had um, a 
games in League Two last year, but his average rating on FOTMOP was 7.00, which is still very, very solid. Um, that obviously shows that he's a good centre back. But um, I have seen a few Oldham fans slating him over on Twitter and um, saying he's not a very good signing for us. I mean, the thing is with him, it's there's. When we signed, let's say, Ferguson, when we signed Drysdale, they had more consistent kind of playing in a way. You know, we saw them play a bit more. But with Jameson, in terms of two years at Oldham, he only played 36 games. The, the exactly. one year and the Tranmere, only 14. So I think the reason that they're potentially slating him is maybe... There's a, there's a load of things that could be contributing to why he hasn't played many games, whether that be potentially inconsistent form, which if you're basing things off Fort Mob, it seemed he was consistently good. But that if if we're going to take it off of that, that's a factor that we can kind of tick off and get rid of. Potentially fitness is another thing. If he's playing that little amount of games, maybe there's a... A concern with the fact that maybe he hasn't worked hard enough by the opinion of some fans. Again, I'm not saying this because of the times I've seen him. They, he's been solid. He's been pretty uh, energetic throughout the entire time I've seen him play. But maybe there's just kind of, of a, a situation of because they didn't see him so much over... The two years supposedly they saw him a lot more on the first and the second maybe the mm-hmm. reason they're slating him is because he didn't potentially have the passion work ethic whatever else but it's a risky signing in the way that he's not played as much as a senior like i guess a senior center back that we know has a lot of league two experience or just the efl experience but i think because it's a free transfer, we know that we've signed him after his contract with Tranmere expired. So it hasn't cost us anything in terms of transfer budget. Mm-hmm. But I think the risk with it is how many games is he going to play over the season? But I personally believe that Coughlin can drive Jameson to be a very good defender. And if anything, we've seen that he's very good at developing a centre back. Definitely, I, I personally agree with that. Um, but anyway, um, do you want to add that video there? Do you um, want to end the video there? I mean, yeah, I've there's there's been a little kind of other bit of news that we could just quickly run over in that Harrison Bright's decided to commit his oh, future to New York for the next year. Of course, that came out today, just before we end this off. We may as well just cover that. And we were talking yeah. before, actually. Uh, press record on this that have we got any options to really uh, contest with Harrison Bright or now that Cam Norman's gone or is that the position there we're going to need to find depth in mm. um, I think it is going to be a, a sort of competition game if we do get someone in obviously Harrison Bright hasn't got that much EFL experience he sort of had a phase under Flynn um, towards the end of one of the seasons, I can't really remember which one, but he did have that sort of phase towards the end wearing the number 50 shirt, which was really nice to see um, Flynn sort of develop uh, youth players. And I think youth players are going to be key for us this year with the likes of Kiban Rye and Tom Stokes and in the side, in the squad within the last couple of games of the season there. Yeah, I mean... I I've I only have the kind of worry that now that Cam Norman's gone, other than Harrison Bright, unless I'm missing somebody in the academy, which I don't think I am, I don't think we really have anyone to contest with Harrison Bright, which can be a good thing for him in the way that he's not going to have anyone to contest with him for his position. <laughs> but because of how many games we've seen, and it's crammed into a little bit of a shorter time, He's not going to be able to play every single game of the season yeah. on his own, especially when this, you could argue, will be his first full season in the EFL as like a regular player. Yeah, that that's you've focused on a very, very strong point there, like being 
that first time league player. Obviously, the newly promoted clubs, a lot of the uh, players have yet yeah, that experience already uh, within their tanks. So you look at the like of Paul Mullin, Jody Jones, um, they've obviously got, already got yet yeah, that experience. So it's going to be different for Harrison to sort of like load into that position now. Yeah, and I think the final point I kind of want to make on this, and it could be very detrimental to what we do with the right back position, is how influential we knew Cam Norman was playing in that role last year. Without him, there's there was a situation where I believe there was one game where he potentially was on the bench and didn't play, and we noticed it. We noticed the kind of you know, without without having his presence, his physicality, his ability on the ball, passing pace, whatever. And the issue that I kind of have and concern is will Harrison Bright kind of have that same effect and how much are the fans potentially, I've just kicked the tripod, how much are the fans potentially going to uh, pressure him to uh, work at that level? Because I'm very sure he can, but... Is it going to be a thing of he clicks immediately or we going to have to wait a few months, potentially until December, January onwards for him to click? Of course, this could all be potentially sorted with him having a dedicated extra right back for him to contest with. Yeah, yeah, at the minute, can he live up to the uh, expectation? The impact that Cam Norman did have. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping he sort of does, like, sort of, like, gel straight into that squad because, obviously, he's been within the first team for a couple of years now. He knows some of the lads very, very well. So he's obviously going to start growing into that team, like, stronger every game. You can notice that under Flynn when we were still playing the five-back. We still play it now, and we're still strong with it. So I'm sort of hoping that we do lean towards Harrison Bright next year. But obviously, if we do get an EFL experience right back in, I wouldn't complain. Yeah, I, th- I do think we kind of... Not saying Harrison Bright isn't good enough to play in this squad, because I believe he is. Mm. But I think the only issue I have is that he would be our only actual right back. So I think we need the uh, option, particularly just for him to be able to rest, because... Being able to play 46 games of a league season along with Cups is going to be something difficult, especially for someone going into his first, again, you could argue, full season. As Yeah, in, well. yeah exactly. I agree with you there. And um, it is going to be tough on old Harrison, but I reckon he is going to, he is going to shine this year. I mean, let's just hope he doesn't get an injury against Andy, because we know that's a... Uh, exactly. And to get his... Uh, major injury in that game but anyway i think that's everything we've got covered is there anything else you want to mention or are we uh cool to end that i don't think we've missed anything we haven't missed anything since we've been on the last with cast with ollie and we talked about uh, yeah we talked about all the contract renewals that happened before this we've talked about the gm meeting and i don't know the kind of summary is now that we've got three players yeah, it's a good thing because we won't have that much of a transfer budget. I've talked about this already, and I'm very aware that this has been going on for the better part of an hour. So I don't think there's much else we could talk about this. Hopefully, we'll get some more information in the next week or two, so we can get back to uh, getting on another one of these. Yeah, exactly. And it it has been a pleasure recording with you tonight, Kieran. Um, obviously. But- Obviously, we moved um, into a busy season now, so let's just hope now we can push on and get promotion. Uh, promotion? How, how nice that would be. But yeah, who knows? Anything can happen in football. Anyway, make sure that you all hit a, hit a like if you've enjoyed this. Subscribe, comment on what you'd like to see it, us talk about, whether we include uh, Ollie. Chris, whatever, let us know what you what you could potentially want us to talk about in the next vidcast after this. And yeah, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. 
day, afternoon, whatever it is when you are watching this. And uh, yeah, take care. Bye.